welcome back to the channel so ladies and gentlemen and if you're new to the channel you're most welcome to uh, browse the few videos I've posted so far I hope you do like it and I hope you will subscribe and uh, tinkle that bell just to get notified the next time I post so yeah this channel is about me riding Ambrosia here my BMW R1200C which I've had since new since 1998 25 year old bike so today is a lovely sunny day with clouds here and there which is just nice but I think it's every now and then there's a little shower which I will try and avoid and hoping to uh, have a nice little ride out on this lovely July weekend so what's the purpose of this uh, of this ride out the purpose of this ride out is to go and visit Watership Down yes the Watership Down the one that's the, uh, the book by a certain, uh, what was it, Richard Adams, I think, the author, who wrote it about some rabbits in a field, having a little adventure, maybe a little dark adventure, some of you might say, and moving from one burrow, from one warren, to another. So, it's a field I've only been to once before a very long time and what prompted me to try and visit it again this time is that I read somewhere is that there's planning permission being put in to build 400 houses over that area now whether they're successful or not and they're planning an application I don't know but being the world being what it is today it's very likely that uh, that will happen at some point and when you see the uh, lovely beautiful area that it is I hope like me you might shake your head a little bit and go there's got to be somewhere else these houses can be built but that's an argument I think for another day but you'll see so anyway so that's where I'm heading it's about 30 miles away and I'll be taking the uh, country lanes from Andover north of Andover from Ambrosia HQ through some villages through some country lanes and uh, to arrive at the uh, edge of the, uh, the field where uh, Watership Down is so what kit am I using today? I've got the uh, Insta360 right there and I've got my GoPro Hero 10 black there and what else have I got I've got my iPhone 10 Pro Max on my uh, quad lock with the quad lock dampener on with the directions to where I need to go and park up And I've got my intercom on with a Bluetooth connection to uh, the phone and with the Google uh, Lady Google speaking to me in my ear Google was sending me that not the way I wanted to go. This is the route I wanted to take. Yeah, so talking about the setup, I think the last thing I need to mention is uh, I'm now regularly using the uh, goalie glue I mentioned in a previous video to make these gloves. Bit more sticky. So yeah, that 
that uh, is the entire setup I have at the moment. Ah, I tell a lie. What I also have in my pannier is the magnetic tank mount for the GoPro, which I will start to use in a, in a little bit just to get some different angles uh, to mix in the editing, just to make the things a bit more interesting to look at. As a matter of fact, I might do that now. There's a place to park up coming up. Village of St. Mary Vaughan. I think there's a little shop or a car park where I could park up and set up the, uh, the tank mount. Right, I think it's uh, right here where this village shop is. Okay, so now look at the GoPro down on the right hand side of the tank. Part of the uh, some I learning and the whole vlogging motor vlogging thing I need to learn to stop and change camera angles a bit more um, I tend to last few videos are almost not in a hurry as such but but not really thinking ahead in the editing and the the different shots that other uh, motorcycle vloggers do which really make the videos look really nice and have you a bit of variety in there and and the different angles of them passing by for example am I brave enough just to leave the uh, say the 360 on a stand by the side of the road drive away come back and, <laughs> and hope it's still there yeah you know I'm gonna have to do something like that sooner or later because they're really nice shots panning shots of the bike driving by because at the end of the day, the channel is about mostly about the bike, really. I do hope the GoPro is still recording audio. that if I move the uh, the dead cat inside the visor the audio is a lot better not so much in the wind noise still a bit but not so much is uh, Lady Google still with me yeah so yeah watership down it was a film I saw when the first one I think released 1976 or something I saw when I was a, a child and it had a rather profound uh, impact on me. I've never forgotten it. And when I subsequently learnt so 20, 30 years that uh, it's actually not that far away from me, the, the field and the area that inspired the author to write it. Is that the author he used to always tell these stories to his t t two daughters whenever they went on long car trips he used to always uh, you know make up stories uh, about these rabbits and, and they was they were so enthralled by it that they uh, they always asked him to that he should put it into a book 
which he subsequently did, probably over about 18 months. He wrote the story of Watership Down. But he had trouble finding any publishers who would publish it. Apparently nobody would touch him. But apparently he found one author who's kind of an independent, I think as maybe a one-man band even, who did uh, Collins, something Collins I think, who did actually then publish the book. And uh, yeah, 50 million copies. And I think it's become my children's favourites all over the world. And I presume translating to many languages. I'm surprised if it hasn't been. And then subsequently made into a film, an animated cartoon film. And that's the one you should watch, the first one. They made another one around 1990 or something. <coughs> a sort of computer animated rabbits. <coughs> it's fine, but no, it, it doesn't have that. Oh, I don't know what it is that the first film had. So go and see the, get the first one. It's actually on YouTube. Somebody's put the whole thing on YouTube. So watch it, you know. I really, really thoroughly recommend it. And if you have really young kids, watch it with them because uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a dark film. So, you know, it's a children's story. It's, it's a bit dark. And from what I understand recently, is that it's been regraded in the UK from a from a grade U to a PG and uh, for those internationals you, need, uh, you must have a, a parent with you to watch it and usually when uh, in recent years when stuff is getting regraded and reclassified <coughs> I normally go oh bloody hell here we go again but actually on this one I kind of agree for very young kids I'm talking about so I'd say I don't know anybody below nine ten then yeah with an adult above that yeah, of course it depends on the child but uh, they'll probably be fine with it lady google says turn right Teeny tiny road, that's what I like. I will probably butcher the story if I try and give you a give you a, a brief outline of it. Very high level, hopefully, uh, you know, so beware of spoilers. Basically, the Rabbits and the Warren, where they start, the story starts off with, there's one of the, the rabbits called Fiverr, who's like at the runt of the litter, but uh, regarded as a, he has a skill of a, being a seer, he has a feeling about the future and what things might going to happen, and he predicted that there's disaster coming to the Warren and they should all leave, find higher ground. And he managed to convince some. to go with him and I think it's his elder brother called Hazel and they decide to leave that warren and head on a journey adventure to get to higher ground and uh, the story is really is all about that journey for them to get to higher ground so uh, yeah they get to uh, in lots of scrapes along the way foxes dogs cats other Warrens with the almost dictatorial communist type regimes rerunning them <clears throat> and one Warren I think well they asked them to join them and they sort of okay fine they joined but they realized there was a sinister reason why they wanted them to join their their Warren so they had to leave that as well and eventually they do make it up to uh, watership down and they start making their Warren there, they start digging, but uh, 
Hazel realizes that uh, all the rabbits are bucks, there are no does. And they realize that that new uh, warren isn't going to last very long when they all die. So then they did some does. So he goes out in little expeditions to try and find some does. And there's a this farm which you, you can see from the top of the, the hill where he does goes and investigates and finds there's some rabbit hatches in, in a shed. And yes, they're does. And he tries to convince them that you know, that come to where they are, they're all living free and do what they want and uh, they agree but he has to uh, bust them out of their uh, <laughs> their jail and the, so the story works the way he does eventually do that and they come and uh, back to, to the, uh, the warren and and I think the other warren, the one there with the, uh, the general I think who really wants, wants to kill him, wants to kill uh, Hazel finds them where they are at the top of the fields, the big battle and yeah, throughout the whole film there is blood and gore at intense moments dark moments and so uh, yeah, thoroughly recommend it, it'll be it'll be something you'll regard as very very unique and you'll probably have it on your list of being favourites like I do or maybe Ferris with an asterisk and that it's not your usual <laughs> type of kiddies film. There's another film like that. Let me just pass this car here. Thank you. Like that is also a dark. It's actually a Disney film. And it's called The Black Hole. And uh, if you can find it, by all means, yeah, watch it. And this is okay for kids to watch all by themselves, but but if you do watch it as well, you, you kind of get that feeling of thinking, <coughs> for a Disney film, there is a dark element that's running through this. You know, not huge, but it's not your usual Disney. So I kind of put that in the same sort of basket as the Watership Down. In that it's a, yes, it's a children's film, but it's a bit different. So anyway, back to Warship Down. I understand that uh, in the 90s or something, the author did write 18 or 19 little short stories. Uh, I think it's called Return to Watership Down or something like that, Watership Down Tales. Uh, those I haven't seen, so those I'm going to have to watch and, 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 and see where, where the story goes. Chop down all the trees and put them in a tree museum. Charge folks 25 bucks just to see them. That's what comes to mind when I think of <laughs> countryside like this game flattened for houses. I know it's necessary. Never been down this road before. Never been. It's quite nice. Very nice. Maybe it's time to change the uh, the GoPro angle, mount it somewhere else.
we are here. and all your motorbike gear so I'm gonna huff and puff a bit now sadly from what I understand is that the actual watership down itself is private property and uh, so though you can look at it you can't go in it oh gate both my hands are full Basically, this is it. This is where we're getting to the water ship down. So, if I put the helmet close to here. And yeah, so I turn it around. And this right in front of us here is the high ground the watership downfield that the uh, all the rabbits in the story were trying to get to get to safety get to high ground that fiver was warning saying that they the warren they were in probably way at the bottom there somewhere in the fields was dangerous and i think it actually was getting was getting plowed ultimately that's what his uh, feeling was i think the field was getting plowed and the bow got plowed which is why he was telling them to leave i think that's what it is don't don't me on that uh, which is why Fiverr had that premonition of saying we have to leave and the journey is somewhere down there up to this hill and uh, building a burrow in the tree uh, is it that tree I don't know but in the in the film they're digging under a tree and it's not very big the watership downfield I think we'll walk a bit more and it's, uh, well, it's a fair size but it's a uh, for rabbits, it's, a, it's probably a huge area. But yeah, and I believe a farm is down there somewhere where they, in the story, Hazel goes and explores and finds the, uh, the does and the hatches in the garage and uh, breaks them out and they run all the way up to this field. And I think as well their original burrow is down there somewhere something called Staplefoot, Staple, Staplefoot, something like that area so yeah let's uh, let's walk around a bit more to the top of this field ah. there we go the watership down trail Let's get ourselves to the other side. Let's walk towards the top here. Whew. Well, the wind has sheltered a bit. I thought it was going to be a lot more windier than that. What is over here as well? I don't know we'll see any trace of it, but uh, there's also a, a stud for horses, and uh, a lot of this field is used for, you know, running, jumping. Uh, this is a watership down. It goes away from us. It's a shame we can't go into it, see the view further down. But this is it. 
And as you can see to the my right there's those little white post things. I'll try and point them out on the on the video. I'll do with the, the horses and the studs, which is I think further down, down the hill there somewhere. But yeah, so you get what I mean when I say that what you see down there at the bottom, apart from maybe the trees and the woodlands, it's gonna be houses. And that's the planning permission to go into it and do. And I think this field as well, something's gonna to happen to it. I'm not sure whether it's gonna be preserved and made into a park, I don't know. The Watership Down, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are in the world watching this video, if you're familiar with the story, the film or the book, this is it. This is the inspiration to the author, who I presume lived nearby, who would tell stories to his two daughters while they go on long journeys, and uh, they convinced him to put it in a book. And what a story it is. As I said, a bit dark, <laughs> but uh, I think when you watch it, it'll be one of those little animation movies that we think, yeah, I don't think I'll ever forget that one. It's a, it's a nice story, a few happy moments in it, funny bits, but lots of uh, tension, blood and gore, death of rabbits. Cats and foxes and dogs. All right, let's even walk a bit further around. There we go. In recognition of Richard Adams, a lover of Watership Down and its inhabitants, May 2013. And as I said, they put engravements of the rabbits on here. So there's Big Wig, I don't know if you can see it. <clears throat> I think Keha was the bird that was helping them. And Hazel down here. And Fiverr, and the characters, the main characters. Oh, is that black, black, black of R, another one there. And another plaque here. Hazel, why are you sitting up there? Dandelion, because I can't see. Come and look. You can see the whole world. Any more moons? No. Any more on this side? No. Well, there we go. A dedication to the author of Watership Down. The story and in the film. The other thing I didn't mention, the other thing I didn't mention in the story is that there's a song in it, Bright Eyes, sung by Art Garfunkel, written by somebody else I think. And uh, oh, it's where they positioned in the film. Uh, if that doesn't make you cry, I don't know what will. Lovely song. Bright Eyes, with, uh, sung by Art Garfunkel. Something to add to my lessons learned list. As I was coming back and I looked at the bike, now I'm looking at the angle of this road. Look where I put the steering, look where I pointed it, and it's not in gear. What an idiot. They turned it around, pointed it uphill, and left it in gear. What an idiot. Right, going to...
going to a pub. Never been to before. For a little snack. This Jaguar Land Rover dealer here is lovely. Went in there for a nosy a few years ago. Wow. Rampant cat. That's the one, and that's the pub. So yeah, there we go to the Rampant Cat, um, an excellent little pub. I'd actually arrived uh, way two hours too late past uh, serving the food, and they actually made me some food, a uh, nice little sandwich, um, not to see me go hungry, which is excellent service, you know. So first time being here, I'll probably come back again, especially to do Sunday roasts. So I will probably uh, try and schedule next time to arrive in, the, in time and to uh, have some food after that. So anyway, so the Rampant Cat in Woolton Hill. What's in Highclere? Highclere Castle. What is Highclere Castle? It's Downton Abbey. That's just literally beyond these houses over here where the uh, Downton Abbey estate is, or Highclere Castle. Been there a few times. Great place to go for a day out when they're having an event on, particularly. I think they had a, a food festival few years ago when I went to that.
Well, there goes nothing. Can I see it in the mirror? Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> yeah, it needs to be straighter than that. Alright. Is that. Oh, well. Here we go. the uh, big bumps. I'm going to jolt it off. Well, I suppose the only good thing I can say is that if, I, if I'm not seeing it in the mirror, it's still up there. Okay, well, we're heading back to Ambrosia territory now, Ambrosia HQ, so all I can say is I uh, hope you enjoyed this little video, I say little, it's probably going to be one of the longer ones, and I hope you uh, like the idea of visiting something like Watership Down, and I hope I imparted a bit of uh, information on there that may have made you want to uh, Look it up, watch it on YouTube, buy the book, and have something uh, quite memorable to add to your uh, your film library in your head, be it your favourites or just one of those on a shelf by themselves, say, that's unique. So, all I can say is subscribe, tinkle that bell, click a like on this video if you'd like this, and uh, if you tinkle that bell, you'll be alerted next time I post something. And uh, I'm aiming to post it's sort of once a, a week, but it's turning out to be once a fortnight at the moment. But my aim is to do once a week. What's the next uh, challenge, next video to do? Well, I'm planning to visit some white horses that are uh, in the area, like of Westbury. Roundway and what's the other one? Effington, I think. Get some footage of the trip there and footage of the white horse itself. Get on the close to the white horse or even on the white horse on the hillside and get some footage from there. So that's something I would definitely want to do. So if you want to uh, catch up on, uh, on that sort of video or like this, then certainly. Uh, Take a like, subscribe, and I will see you all on the next one. Drive safely, keep safe, and bye-bye uh, for now, everybody.